Stick around to the end to see how I've nearly doubled my chili growing operation. Welcome back, my name is Sean, also known as Chili Chump, and I love all things to do with chilies, growing them, making hot sauces, doing automation to make everything run smoother, and I share all of this information with you guys on my channel. Make sure you are subscribed down below if you aren't already yet. Today, it's time for another garden update video. It's been a little while since my last one, so let's see how the chilies are doing as well as how the vegetable garden is doing. Firstly, my artichokes. Look at these guys. We already have a couple coming through. Can't wait to eat them. They are absolutely delicious. I cut it right down to the base at the end of last season and look at them now. They just grow so quickly. Another thing that I've been able to eat already is my asparagus. Three years in the waiting for that. And my goodness, they were absolutely delicious, far sweeter than any asparagus that I've had from the supermarket. I'm just so pleased. Uh, it took a lot of time to get to the point where I could eat them because you have to wait a few years before you're able to harvest the first harvest. But after that, yeah, we're just gonna have an abundance of asparagus. Yesterday, I prepped this bed for some vegetables. It was looking a lot like this bed over here with loads and loads of weeds. In fact, here are all the weeds down here. I'll be moving those out to my compost heap. As long as you're hot composting, then the seeds from weeds will actually be uh, killed off. So it's not a problem. But in here we have some radishes, we have some beetroot and a bunch of carrots. And if we take a look over that side, we have my corn. You can see I've planted my corn a lot closer together than I did last year. Last year I had three in a row, whereas this year I have five in a row. And that's because we get a lot of wind where we live and it'll help protect them. Plus, it'll help pollinate the corn a lot better and we'll get a much bigger corn harvest. You can see in between where the bamboo stakes are, those are peas that I've planted. And that's to help amend the soil. It fixes it, basically pushes nitrogen into the soil. So it's kind of similar to the three sisters method, except I don't have the third sister, which is squash or pumpkin growing in between. These are tomatoes. These are San Marzano tomatoes. I've started 10 in this bed. And on the far side, there's another 10. And I'm going to be using those for some sauces that I have planned for later this year. This here is my garlic bed. And again, these will be used for hot sauce. Quite a lot of it will be used for my garlic fire hot sauce. I'll be making black garlic out of it. This is one of two cabbage beds that I'm starting this year. Well, this one's already started. The second one, I still need to weed it and uh, only just started the seeds yesterday for that one. But this one's well underway. We have some normal cabbages in here, which I'll be making a lot of sauerkraut. And we also have some Chinese cabbage because I'm gonna be making some kimchi finally for you guys. I love kimchi. And I was meant to do a video last year on kimchi, but my Chinese cabbage did not do well. Caterpillars got hold of them, and the one that the caterpillars didn't get hold of actually bolted. So, yeah, it wasn't very successful. Hopefully this year we have better luck. The majority of my chili plants are in here at the moment, and uh, there are a couple in Big Chump, and also some in the polytunnel, which many of you actually probably haven't seen yet, unless you were on my last live stream. But yeah, things are looking pretty good in here. I am happy with the progress. I tried something a little different this year by starting my plants a little later than I normally would. And we'll see how that plays out later in the season. My plants are doing well, for the majority of them are at least. And you can see this sort of growth. I love this, where you see this internodal growth. These leaves coming up in between the leaves. It's just gonna be a lovely bushy plant. Let's check what it is. It's a zebrangi or zebrang, uh, zebrangi I think it is. It's capsicum bactum. It's 13 weeks old and yeah, it's a lovely growth on there. Next to that, this one here is even more bushy. I do still pinch off the flowers. So pinching off, you just see a flower coming up, just you can do that. That kills it. And uh, that just helps focus the growth in the actual leaves and the, the plant and most importantly the roots that is a kimchi pepper so <laughs> supposedly the chili that they use to make the kimchi powder which i'll be able to combine with my lovely chinese cabbages that i'm growing over here this i'm pretty sure is a capsicum pubescence which one it's the ricotta manzana you can see that by the 
furry leaves and the furry stem. But again, some beautiful growth coming up. The majority of these are going to be super hot and you can tell that because of the way they are. They do take longer to grow than things like your Anum. I'm guessing this is an Anum. Um, Thunder Mountain Longhorn maybe or a spaghetti. Yeah, that's a spaghetti pepper. What is this one over here? That looks lovely. That's a Naga Morik, Capsicum Chinens, 13 weeks old. And look at that beautiful growth, stunning. This one over here is another soup art, of course. It is a red Prima Tali, and again, beautiful growth. These ones here, you can see these are in smaller pots, and well, you can see the comparison here. They're just quicker growing chili. Let's see what that is. So that's a pepper dew, which is a capsicum bactum. And if we compare that to the red prima tali, they both started at the same time, but you can see the type of growth is very different to each other. And uh, of course, pot size, that's a tiny little pot, but we still have such good growth. Now, there's a reason for that with smaller pots. When I do pot this up, the root system is gonna be beautiful and dense. And that's exactly what you want for these chilies because the denser the root system, the more nutrients, more water that they can process at a time. If you have just a tiny little root system, then you're going to have problems because your plant's just not going to be able to absorb nutrients and water as quickly. That's a big mistake people make and that's one of the reasons why we don't water constantly. Because if you're constantly watering, especially watering from the top, then what happens is the plant just has access to water all the time or nutrients all the time. And it's just going to be a tiny root system because it doesn't have to spread to find the nutrients. It doesn't have to spread to find the water. You want to force it to spread. Over there, I have some lettuce growing in the Kratky method. And I'm just repurposing some old containers. I have another one over here. And we'll see how those turn out. If you do want me to do a video on how this is done, it's very simple. I'm happy to do that. Just let me know in the comments. Over here, we have some more chilies. Uh, you can see I've got some different pot sizes in this. So not just the square one liter pots or the 500 ml pots. We actually have some bigger ones than that. What plant is this? It's a champion, Capsicum bacatum. Uh, using some bigger pots just to try something out. But traditionally I like to use one liter pots straight from the seed trays. Uh, that one there is a ricotta manzano. So it isn't too much bigger than the one in a smaller pot, actually. Um, it's one of the reasons why I don't like going to too much of a bigger pot. The roots are going to be searching. It's not going to be filling out this pot. So it's going to be quite a while before I can pot that up to the final pot size. This is a pretty looking plant. This here, I believe, is the Golden Nugget. Yeah, Golden Nugget, Capsicum Manum. It's 12 weeks old. So it's doing quite nicely. It's beautiful little leaves. Bit of asymmetry going on which is kind of interesting to see and some interesting coloring as well It'd be nice to see what the pods look like this here is another capsicum pubescence you can see by the furriness on the leaves and on the stem which one is that ricotta manzana again where are we yeah another ricotta manzana over here are some squashes and some melons and i'll be planting those out in the next few days they're looking almost ready but yeah, a little bit longer in here, and then we'll take them outside and put them up against the trellis. These are some seeds that were provided to me by my good friend Lewis from Chubby's Chilies. These four here are what are called RB003. So look that up. Very interesting capsicum chinens. And they'll be going into my hydroponic system. But really keen to try these out. The pods look amazing. That is my CC Fushimi. So this is a bit of a genetic anomaly that I discovered last year. A lot of asymmetry and yeah, a lot of discoloration, some weird funky leaves. And the pods as well had striping on them. So if you did buy some CC Fushimi seeds, the majority of you guys seem to have been getting the same anomaly that I'm getting, which is fantastic to see. I'm going to keep on growing this out and uh, hopefully we keep on getting our some beautiful anomalies like this. Little visitors come to visit me in the greenhouse. Uh, Barney is growing up so quickly. <laughs> he is still very, very cute. Very, very naughty. What do you want to do? 
Gonna go chase some chickens again. That's the problem. It can be very easy to get distracted by Barney. He likes following me around in the greenhouses. Uh, one thing I did want to show you here, this is a fascinating little plant. Check out the busy growth on that thing. It's going crazy. This is a Bikino yellow, but check that thing out. It's just got some crazy growth. It's going to be a lovely bushy plant, that. Just what I like to see. This plant over here is my Lemon Perry F3. Let me confirm. So yeah, that is a Lemon Perry F3. This is typical when you are crossing your own chilies, especially some of the harder to cross species that don't really like to cross very readily. You're going to have some challenges like this where the plant is going to be growing a lot slower. Now, I'm not too concerned about that. This is the F3, so third generation. And uh, yeah, essentially, I'll be growing this out a couple more generations till it starts to stabilize more. Once it's at that stage, I'll be planting tons of seeds for this and start selectively breeding for the qualities I want. In particular, I want this to be growing a lot quicker. I want it to germinate quicker. Now, that's why my CC Peri Peri does so well. I've been selectively breeding that for a long time. Obviously, that's not a cross, but it's one that I've been selectively breeding for so long now that I know that it's going to germinate very quickly. It's going to have very good growth uh, in the beginning of the season and amazing harvests at the end of the season. And of course, the chilies taste exactly how I want them to. So that's my Lemon Perry F3. I have a few of those growing, so it's not just the one. And yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. I can't wait till it is more stable and I can start giving them out to you guys because I won't be selling it. I will be just sending them out to you from my seed store. I'll be including them with uh, seed packs. Not just yet, only once uh, I have stabilized it. I don't want a bunch of different generations out there of this plant. In the front there, you'll see those there are my French marigolds. So these are what I use to attract hoverflies and other predators that will help get rid of the aphids and it absolutely works like a dream. We're in Big Chump now, my large greenhouse. You can see the spacing is a little different from last year. I've actually halved the number of plants I'm going to have on the staging as well as on these tables here. I'm sure I'll be producing even more chilies than I did last year, even with fewer plants. Mrs. Chili Chump's been giving me a hand, which is why the floor looks so nice. But let's go have a look at the end there, at that beauty. The competition between Pepper Geek and I is uh, heating up, excuse the pun, but you can see my plant is doing beautifully. I am just so pleased with the growth on this thing. I particularly chose this plant out of the ones that I germinated because of the beautiful symmetry. Let's take a look at the top. So you can see here how that stem has split out to two and then it's split out to two again. And then each of these are split out into two. And even those have split out into two. And it keeps doing that all across here. This plant is going to be gorgeous as long as, yeah, as long as this keeps growing bigger and stronger on the stems. But I am feeding it so that it will have seriously strong stems. Because that's part of the trick here. You want this, number one, you want this to be symmetrical. If you are growing a monster plant, you want it to be nicely balanced. And this most definitely is. It's got to be one of the most beautiful plants I've ever grown. I did purposely look out for one of my seedlings that was showing this sort of behavior, but absolutely pleased with it and so much growth, all this new growth coming through. The leaves are looking healthy. Everything on this is just absolutely perfect. I, I'm like a proud father with this thing. The progress in here has been a little slower than I would have liked, but I think the plants are still bedding in. They're still developing their root system. Once that root system is properly developed, this is going to be an absolute jungle. The plants are looking healthy. They have dropped some leaves in the beginning because it actually gets ridiculously hot inside this polytunnel. Uh, but they're all alive. Some are doing far better than others. Like that one over there is growing like crazy. But yeah, once those root systems fill these buckets, they'll be able to absorb far more of the nutrients and water and you'll see these things just shoot up. Let's take a look over at that plant over there and I'll show you a little something. You can see the growth up top here. There's a lot of new growth coming through and that makes me confident that this plant will be all right. You'll notice that down the bottom here, all the leaves have actually fallen off and they all fell off at the top here as well. There was only a few leaves coming through still and yeah, you can see those dead leaves. 
you can see that new growth coming through where all those leaves fell off and that new growth is going to be acclimatized to this environment when the plants have come from a nice cushy environment where they were inside my germination shed then the leaves developed for that environment when you suddenly stick them out inside direct sunshine and a really really hot polytunnel then those leaves are not going to have much of a chance so don't stress too much if you see all your leaves coming off your plant as long as there is some new growth coming through then your plant should recover just fine what you can do to avoid it is obviously do some shade netting uh, limit the amount of sunshine and uh, slowly increase the amount of sunshine they get each day then you won't lose as many leaves as i did but honestly this doesn't set the plant back too much as long as like i said there is new growth coming through then you should be just fine I wanted to give a huge thank you to Kevin from Epic Gardening. Uh, he sent over these raised beds, so you can see I have one already built in this corner. There's going to be a second one that's going to be over there, and I will be doing a proper review on it a little bit later in the season once I've used it a little bit. But uh, go check him out. Go check out his channel, Epic Gardening. I will still be doing a video showing how I put together all this hydroponic system here, how it all works, as well as a little video on the polytunnel, and that'll be coming in the not too distant future. I hope that your season has got off to a fantastic start and that you're looking at lovely, beautiful, healthy plants. I hope that you're enjoying these videos. I hope that you enjoyed this one. And until the next one, stay spicy. I wanted to say a massive thank you to my patrons and to my YouTube members. If you do want to sign up for that, uh, there are some links down below. But to you guys, you help keep this channel going. You help keep me making videos and I really appreciate every single one of you. You guys are amazing.